Mexico, a country that's economically orientated towards North America, but also a country where the people have that typically South American warm-blooded and temperamental character. The Copper Canyon Railway winds along steep hills, riding through beautiful scenery. The train travels through deep ravines and climbs to enormous heights where the panoramic views are brilliant. We ride through the country of the Tarahumara Indians. The Copper Canyon Railway is justifiably called one of the most spectacular train routes of the continent. Our route will take us north from Los Mochis to Chihuahua. It's still early when a small fishing boat crosses the bay of Topolabampo. The bay, which has an open link with the Pacific Ocean, is a popular resting area for dolphins. And if you pay close attention, you'll see a couple appear on the surface every now and then. Los Mochis lies 25 kilometers from the coast. This city was founded in 1903 by an American businessman who wanted to refine his sugar here. Since then, Los Mochis has become an agricultural center for the entire region. In the center of Los Mochis, you won't find any historic buildings in narrow alleyways. The American-like city has a modern center with streets lined up neatly parallel to one another. Just outside the center, we find a beautiful botanical garden. It's a lot quieter here than in the city center. In this garden, an attempt was made to represent the history of Mexican vegetation. Large parts of the country have always been swampy, and there are many plants here that thrive in such an environment. As beautiful as these surroundings may be, we came to Mexico specifically for one of the most remarkable train journeys of South America. For this reason, we go to the station of Los Mochis, where the South Orient Express is preparing for departure. The station of Los Mochis is modern. Many tourists come here on their way to Chihuahua. On the other side of the track, there are three old cars that, after a long life on wheels, have been given a completely new function. These cars are very different from the shining cars of the South Orient Express. They date back to the 1940s and have been beautifully restored. The train slowly rolls out for the first part of this journey. As we leave the station, we pass a veritable graveyard of carriages. These cars here have probably made the journey ahead of us thousands of times. We're leaving Los Mochis and heading for Bahuichivo. Just outside of the city, we take a seat in the panoramic car. The view of the plains is beautiful.
The Mexicans call this railway track the eighth wonder of the world. As early as 1869, construction was started on the connection between Los Mochis on the west coast and Chihuahua in the north. It would take almost a hundred years before the connection would be completed. Lack of funds and the rough terrain through which the track had to go continually slowed down construction. After an hour, we cross one of the many bridges on this trip. Slowly crossing high above the blue water, it becomes clear that the railway workers produced a genuine work of art constructing this track. As the train rides deeper into the Sierra Madre Mountains, the terrain becomes increasingly rough. After an hour, we pass Puenta Chinipas. With an elevation of more than 100 meters, it's the highest bridge on this track. The South Orient crosses this obstacle with caution. It's a beautiful sight. the train is covering is already centuries old. There was considerable trade between the west coast and the fertile plains in the north. Along the steep cliffs of the Sierra Madre, you can still see the passes that traveling traders used to travel on foot. And in those days, no one had heard of tunnels yet. Chivo, actually not much more than a dot on the map. The South Orient Express makes a brief stop here. The loud ringing of the train rudely interrupts the tranquility of this mountain village. On the platform, some workers are ready to board. They're on their way east to work in the mines. There isn't much work for them in the small village of Bahuichivo. Consequently, the village looks a bit deserted. The South Orient leaves Bahuichivo after just a couple of minutes. We stay behind and will continue on later with another unique train, El Pacifico. Since we had to wait for the El Pacifico anyway, we have the opportunity to explore the area. Bahuichivo may be a sleepy village, but the location is magnificent. 
From the edge of Bahuichivo, we have a view overlooking the Barranca Urique. The mountain summits hiding in the mist and clouds are at an elevation of over 2,500 meters. The Copper Canyon actually begins here and includes as many as 20 canyons. Combined, they're four times bigger than the Grand Canyon in the United States. meanders through one of the valleys. Along the river is an old mission post, it's Sirokahui. In the mid-16th century, there was already a village here, but Sirokahui only became well known in the area when the Spanish priest Juan Maria de Salvatierra arrived here. Around 1690, he had this church built, and the faithful still come here from near and far to pray every Sunday. Sirokahui is a popular stopover for travellers on the El Pacifico train. For experienced hikers, it's an excellent starting point for beautiful walking tours. And anyone who wants to relax can stay at one of the old haciendas that have been renovated into hotels. The rooms circle the old courtyard. Anyone who sleeps here has the luxury of being guarded by a bear. The bear can be seen in these rocks, according to the inhabitants of Sirokahui. He's standing to the right, complete with cap, nose and mouth. We travel deeper into Copper Canyon and go towards Divisadero. The trip is under 50 kilometers, but the train has to climb another 800 meters. Needless to say, it doesn't go very fast, but it will be a beautiful journey. After more than an hour, we slowly enter the heart of Copper Canyon. Meanwhile, we are at an altitude of 2,500 meters. The train negotiates increasingly more dangerous looking hurdles. For anyone who doesn't have a fear of heights, this is a fantastic sight. Pacifico reaches the so-called roof of Copper Canyon. The mountains here are suddenly less steep and bare. This is El Divisadero. Yeah. 
Directly on the railway track, a lively market is held daily by the indigenous people of this region, the Tarahumara Indians. They take this opportunity to sell a number of handmade goods to the tourists. <laughs> Approximately 50,000 Tarahumara Indians live in this vast region of Mexico. Because the Indians live in such a barren region, they've been able to keep many of their own customs. The Tarahumara may enjoy selling their baskets and jewelry to outsiders, but for the most part, it's a closed community. Besides the Indians, El Divisadero is particularly famous for having the most spectacular view overlooking Copa Canyon. The view includes the three great names of the area, the Urique, the Tararequa, and the Cobre. Back to our journey. We continue tracking over the canyons and move on to Creel. We just missed the El Pacifico, but that's not a problem because the more luxurious South Orient Express also passes through here daily. The South Orient has already passed the highest point on the route by the time we arrive in Creole. Nestled in the fierce mountains, Creel has always been a bit isolated from its surroundings. The train that passes here twice a day is still the only evidence that an outside world exists. The isolated location of Creel has had obvious consequences. According to urban Mexicans, many inhabitants here have hardly outgrown the Billy the Kid stage. They supposedly see Creel as the center of the Mexican Wild West, paying little attention to outsiders. A visitor strolling through the village wouldn't notice much of that. Certainly not in the small center of Creel where colorful shops attract attention. Here too, the Tarahumara Indians tried to sell handmade goods to tourists. The Lago de Arareco lies roughly seven kilometers south of Creole. 
The horseshoe-shaped lake is nestled between the steep cliffs of one of the canyons. The clear water may look inviting for a swim, but it's freezing cold most of the year. Near the lake, there is the 400-year-old mission post of San Ignacio. Several dozen Indian families live here. This is their territory. The Tarahumaras are known for their rather unusual way of hunting. They pursue their prey until the animal collapses from exhaustion. Consequently, Tarahumaras have an exceptional physical stamina, a trait that came in handy when fleeing from the Spanish occupiers. The Indians used to lead a predominantly nomadic existence, but nowadays they stay in one place for a long time. Near San Ignacio, we see a number of oddly shaped rock formations. Created by nature over many years, it's as if these rocks have grown into enormous mushrooms. There's no chance we'll be picking these, though. We return to the train station of Creel. The South Orient Express is ready for the next part of the journey. The diesel locomotive goes full speed ahead as we head for Chihuahua. The trip is approximately 300 kilometers long and is mostly downhill. After a couple of hours, the rhythm of the train is interrupted by the sounds of big city traffic. We've arrived in Chihuahua. Chihuahua is the capital of Mexico's identically named province. It's a big city that's mainly known for these little four-legged critters, the Chihuahuas. At one time, the ancient Aztecs served them on a platter. Now rich Americans in particular desire them as pets. A striking centerpiece in this city is the San Francisco Cathedral. The construction of the church began in 1717 and was completed 80 years later. The city with the small dogs is the final stop of this impressive train journey through Mexico. Next week, Railaway visits Austria, country of mountains, classical music and nostalgic trains.